Hi, my name is Barry Bowling. I am an application engineer with Yokogawa's Test and Measurement Department. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a watt meter and measure three phase electrical power along with a number of other parameters using the three watt meter method. I'm going to explain what the three watt meter method is and then I will quickly run through an algebraic proof for total power using the three watt meter method along with a simple schematic. The result may surprise you. Then I will show you how simple it is to connect a power meter using the three watt meter method and then using a three phase variable motor drive and motor setup I will make some measurements as part of the demonstration. During the measurements I will demonstrate a very important feature called delta computations. Last I will discuss the pros and cons of the three watt meter method and discuss and review when you should consider using the three watt meter method. Okay, here is the three-phase, three-wire system. The three-phase AC source is depicted on the left-hand side, and the load is on the right-hand side. Each of the three phases has an ammeter in series, and each of the three line-to-line -line voltages has a voltmeter. Each ammeter-voltmeter pair is a single wattmeter. So this topology is often called three-wattmeter method because we are measuring three voltages and three currents. We also call it 3V. 3A for short. Generally speaking, when measuring three phase power, the first inclination would be to use three watt meters because we do have three phases. However, Blondell's theorem states that we can measure power using n minus one meters where n is the number of wires. So for three wires, n minus one is three minus one or two, which is two watt meters. However, in this example, I'll use three meters and I'll explain what the advantages of doing so will be. And for now, I will state that if you want the overall best power metering solution for a three wire system, this is probably it. Three watt meters on three wires. Wiring three watt meters up will take a little bit more effort and time to set up, but it is usually worth that extra effort. Okay, next, let's look at the algebraic derivation for total power when using this method. First, in equation A, I've written total power in terms of internal voltages such as ERN, ESN, ETN, and the phase currents IR, IS, and IT. These voltages mentioned here as internal voltages are inaccessible. For example, they could be internal to a motor, a motor which does not have a, a neutral line to it, just three wires. In equation B, I've written the total power seen by watt meter one as IR times ERN minus ETN. That's internal voltages and phase current IR. I've written it also as P1 equals IR times ERT. Here ERT is more readily measured externally to the load as a line-to-line -line voltage. Equation C, similarly for P2, I've written it both in terms of the phase current, IS, the internal voltages, ESN and ETN, and the phase current, which is also much more accessible, voltage EST. Equation D, by Kirchhoff's law, the sum of the three phase currents equals zero. The neutral wire is non-existent, so there's no neutral current in this equation. So we're going to solve for I sub T in terms of IR and IS. I've written that equation here as equation E. So IT equals minus IR plus IS. The last step is to write the total power equation, equation F, and it starts out here in terms of the internal voltages and the phase currents. We'll substitute IT with IR plus IS and solve for total power again and with some simplification, we get the total power equation written in terms of phase currents and internal voltages. Going back to use equations C and D as substitutions, we show that P total is written here in terms of line-to-line -line voltages and phase currents, items which we can easily measure. And with one more substitution, we can sub further simplify using equations C and D again, we get P total equals P1 plus P2. Okay, now that we know the total power is the sum of the two watt meters, let's wire meter up. So let's revisit the schematic first. From the schematic, each of the three phases comes in from the left-hand side at the source, 
and after going through the power meters, arrives at the load on the right. So first we wire watt meters 1, 2, and 3 with I1, I2, and I3, respectively, through the ammeters or the internal shunts. Each phase simply passes through the meter's internal shunt. Then each meter gets a voltage input. U1 is phase R to T and is measured after the internal shunt at the load. U2 is phase S to T and is again measured after the internal shunt at the load. U3 is phase R to S and once again measured after the internal shunt at the load. A simple way to remember phase is that the top of each voltage input goes to the load side as does the bottom. And the top of each current input goes to the source side while the bottom of each current input goes to the load side. And this is not intuitive. We do not have I1 paired with U1, for example. So don't try to wire this using any other method. It, it won't work. It has to be wired exactly as you see here. Okay, next we're going to wire the power analyzer. First, we wire watt meters one, two, and three with currents IR, IS, and IT. So these are the ammeters, and each phase simply passes through the meter's internal shunt. Then each meter gets a voltage input. So U1 here is phase R to phase T and is measured after the internal shunt at the load. U2 here is phase S to phase T and is again measured after the internal shunt at the load side. U3 is phase R to S and once again measured after the internal shunt at the load. A simple way to remember phase is that the top of each voltage input goes to the load side as does the bottom. At the top of each current input this goes to the source side, so the top of this current input comes from the source side, um, while the bottom of each current input goes over to the load side. Okay, let's do a quick power measurement using this setup. Okay, I've finished wiring the meter and I have the motor and the drive running, so let's take a closer look at the measurements. Okay, so here I have for element one, element two, and element three, also known as watt meter one, two, and three, I have uh, three line-to-line -line voltages and a total line-to-line -line voltage. I have three phase currents and a total current. I have three phase powers. The first two are the ones that really count here. And then I have a total uh, power. So uh, I have a parent power, S, three of those. And then I have reactive power for all three meters. I have power factor for each of the three meters. In addition to that, I have delta measurements. So I have line to neutral voltages, three of them. I have a neutral current here. I have three uh, power, let's say three power meter readings. So these are phase power meterings. So all three of these are valid, one for each of the phases, as well as a total power. Now that we have seen how to perform a three watt meter power measurement, let's talk about the pros and cons of this method. First, some pros. You get an accurate total power measurement and you get the line to line phase voltage measurements. This method works great for a source load system that does not have a neutral. Because we have enabled delta star computation, we also get all three line voltages as well as the neutral line current. You can't get that with the two watt meter method. And we get phase power for each phase. The most important positive outcome is that you get accurate power factor for both unbalanced and balanced loads with the three watt meter method. This is probably the most important thing that I can tell you about three watt meter method. And this is a strong reason to choose this method over the two watt meter method. Now for some cons. You do have a few more wires, but this method is still fairly easy to set up and is worth that extra effort. Many engineers are initially puzzled when they see 
that total power is the sum of two watt meters and we discussed that today as well. Okay, now I would like to do a quick review. I explained what the three watt meter method is and we looked at a schematic of it and then quickly went through a derivation or proof for the total power. Then I explained how to connect three watt meters to a three wire three phase system. In other words, a system without a neutral. I took some measurements and I included uh, those values that were provided by the delta star computation as well. Then I reviewed several pros and cons of the three watt meter method and discussed when you might want to consider using the three watt meter method. So that's the end of my three watt meter method demonstration and I hope this information is useful to you. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit tmi.yokogawa.com.